Well everyone, iOS 26.2 is finally out to the entire public and there's a bunch of new changes that are not only quality of life improvements, but also some really nice features that we've been wanting for a while. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and see exactly what's new with 26.2. Let's get into it. But now, if you do enjoy videos where we go over all things Apple software with both iOS and iPadOS, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. But now let's get into the first brand new feature in the Reminders application. Well, alright everyone, let's get right into this. And to show off iOS 26.2, we're using my iPhone 17 Pro right here, but all these features should be coming to all the iPhones that support 26.2. But if you go into our settings, go into our general, then go into our about, you can see that we are on 26.2, and the new build number is gonna be 23C52. So just so you guys are aware and up to date as to what that build number is going to be. And when it comes to build size, it was around eight gigabytes in size. So it depends on which iPhone you have, but give yourself at least 15 gigs of open storage for this to install and install correctly. But in terms of what's new, like I said, we got an abundance of brand new features. The first one's gonna be in the Reminders application. So if we go into the Reminders app, you now have the ability to integrate alongside the alarm. So for instance, you open a reminder, if you tap on a new reminder, you can create one. And if you toggle on this new urgent toggle, which is brand new to the Reminders app on 26.2, you can actually lock your phone and not be in the reminders app and then you will get an alarm notification which again is something that wasn't around before so if we want to test something out if we type in test you can see this we can put our date we can do it for today scroll down for time we can do it for 11:55. and throughout the video maybe it'll show up but we'll press on urgent so it says allow alarms for urgent reminders it'll let you know to get alarms for reminders, you mark as urgent, allow reminders to schedule alarms. Urgent reminders will activate an alarm even when your device is silenced or if a focus mode is on. We're gonna press continue on that one. We're gonna press allow. So it's gonna allow it to bypass pretty much everything that it was just stating right there. So ideally at 11.55, we'll get an alarm no matter what's going on. And you can see that I do have a focus mode on right now, the do not disturb or the reduce interruptions. And it will also turn on when your phone is locked. Before that, if a reminder did come on and it was time sensitive, you would just get a regular push notification on your lock screen. But now there's an actual alert, which is gonna be great to see. As you can see right there, the reminder did pop up and it's a regular alarm. You can tap in here, it'll take you to the reminders application and you can exit out and you can also snooze it as well, which is nice to see. Another little piece with that reminders app is that there is a live activity that is in real time showing you how long ago that reminder app was set to be reminded. I'm gonna swipe that away because I don't need it right now to make it go away. Next up is gonna be in Apple Music. So if you're a big lyric person in Apple Music, now if you save a song offline, it'll actually save the lyrics offline as well. So if you are in airplane mode, if you are taking a trip with no service and you have a couple songs that are, again, saved or downloaded offline, the lyrics will show up as well. Another one is gonna be in the podcast application. As you can see right here, when you first open it up, you get this brand new splash screen and it's because we get AI generated podcast chapters. So even if the person or the podcaster does not put chapters in their actual episode, Apple, with Apple Intelligence, will be able to then create the chapters on its own. So it says here, easily navigate more episodes with automatic created chapters. You also have podcast mentions, so see and follow mentioned podcasts right from where the player ends transcripts. And from this episode, quickly access links shared in the podcast for the episode page. So it makes it a little bit more accessible, a little bit easier. You can see by going here and then scroll down, you can see that I have everything right here where I need it. So you have all the chapters, everything is accessible, much easier to use and be able to kind of access everything you need from the podcast application. So that's a new update to the podcast app. Now some other kind of quality of life improvements. So if I go down here and if I kind of customize this, you can see first and foremost, again, the live activity continues to stay there. We can see that the actual clock widget or the regular clock is pretty transparent and on video it's almost unwatchable or unseeable. So now if I go over here and long press to actually customize this, press customize, you now have a slider to customize how liquid glassy you want this. So this slider, if you move it back and forth, it'll actually make it a little bit more transparent or vice versa, a little bit more bold to be able to actually see what's going on. And what's nice about this is that no matter which font you use, you'll be able to kind of use that slider as you see fit right here. So Again, the only one that's allowed to be large is a normal font. All the other ones have to remain that same smaller size. But now you know that you can actually change how liquid glass or how much liquid glass you want, at least for the clock right here. And I want Apple to bring that over to the rest of the operating system because for me, I want as much liquid glass as possible. But for others, it's a readability issue and they want no liquid glass whatsoever. So at least now Apple's showing us that it's possible at least on the lock screen. 
another new one is going to be in the passwords application and again a little bit more on the niche side here so if i go in here and type in password to get into the password app and then i scroll down to where it says show excluded website so here it says you'll be asked to save passwords when signing into an app or website except for the websites that you include in this list so again whenever you go sign into a website you can ask if you want to complete the login process now here you use your face ID and then you see there's a list of some websites here that have been added. I don't really know what websites or why these websites have been added, but at least they're in there, meaning that whenever you log into this website, it will not save this and it will not ask you to use face ID. To do this, you'll have to manually add your login or username and password. So that's a new addition for a little bit extra security as well. Another fun one that came out is going to be in the accessibility setting. So if we go into accessibility, then go into audio visual, Apple decided to bring back the flash for alerts. I remember jailbreaking my iPhone way back in the day to do this, but we have this option here to flash for alerts. You toggle this on and that means for certain alerts and notifications, you can have the LED flash on the rear as well as a screen flash or both of them flash when you are getting an alert. So that's a nice little kind of tidbit that was added. If you want to have a silent alert, that's a little bit more visual as well. Another new one to consider here is going to be in your general, then go into airdrop, and now we have a new option for being able to kind of dictate who you're sending airdrops to. So we have this new manage known airdrop contacts. So it says here you will automatically appear for 30 days to people that you have shared a one-time code with. So you tap on this and then you're able to send something to whoever you see fit. And then when you do select one of those people that are on that list, you share a one-time code. And then for 30 days, you'll be able to share or airdrop something with that person and vice versa because you've allowed it in that manage airdrop contact. So another new way to kind of make this a little bit more secure for those people that feel like it's not secure yet. Another UI change, not really a functional one, but more of just a look one. If we go into the measure application, which I use all the time, we got a brand new UI here. So again, we have the measure app here, but the newest one is going to be the leveler. So if I move this around, you can see that it's kind of now using a more liquid glassy design and look and if you kind of tilt it this way you can see it kind of changes as you see fit so you can see here that there's a brand new liquid glassy design for the measuring application i changed what the orientation is but you can see if you turn it it just looks a little bit more liquid glassy and if you are using it on the z-axis it actually shows like two bubbles converging together and it's just a nice little visual change nothing functional again just purely visual the next one's going to be in the games application so as you can see here you are greeted with a brand new splash screen so it says filter your library, sort and filter by category, size, and more. You have new controller support, so navigate the game apps with improved controller support. And then you have the track scores challenge. What's nice about this is that you just go into your library and then you're able to filter everything by, you know, when you've used it, your most recent, Apple Arcade, friends playing, controller support, categories, name, size, recent games, latest, first. Again, if I want to flip that over, these are all the old ones that I saw. These are games that I played 10, 12, 15 years ago, which is crazy to think about. And it's fun to see. As you can see, I've been kind of loving Retro Bowl lately. My daughter plays some of these ones, but Retro Girl is one of my favorite ones. Shout out to them. Another small tweak and UI change is going to be in the news application. So if we go into the news application, you can have quick toggles up here to let you decide where you're going from a categorical standpoint when it comes to whatever news you're looking at. So you can go to politics, business, food, sports, whatever the case may be. Of course, Go Canes, they are now in the college football playoff which is great to see. Another one is going to be in the health application. So Apple did introduce the new sleep score moniker or the new sleep score kind of UI and change, but they, the numbers or the formula they were using to give you your numerical value wasn't great. Like I was getting 90, 95, 98 on days where I wasn't getting that much sleep. And they not only changed the new formula, they also changed the naming moniker of it. So now the new rating labels are very low, low, okay, high, and very high because they thought that before when it was saying excellent, it was too subjective. Now these are a little bit more objective in terms of you're not really deciding who thinks what's excellent and who thinks what's not excellent. They're a little bit more objective in terms of the naming. So this is the new sleep score and you can see that I did get an 84, sleeping about almost seven hours there, which isn't a bad night overall, especially with a two and a half month old. And then two other small things that were added here, AirPod with live translation is now in the EU. So that's something that's great to see. And then lastly, CarPlay has disabled pin messages. So if you are able to use CarPlay with your iPhone or with your car, that's a nice little update to see as well. But that's everything new with iOS 26.2. Let's do one last thing, which is gonna check battery life. Battery life on my 17 Pro has actually been really, really good. So we go into battery life right here, let it load its thing. Let's go into view all battery usage. Scroll down, you can see that we're getting about three hours and 38 minutes. If we go on a day like this, 106, we got nine hours of screen on time, eight and a half hours or eight hours and 50 minutes of screen idle time. Let's see on a day like this, 99% of my battery. I got 10 hours and 23 minutes of active screen time with 99% of my battery used, which is kind of amazing, especially with the 17 Pro version. This isn't even the Pro Max version, which probably gives you even better battery life. On a day like this, 110, nine and a half hours. Again, I'm charging my phone 
pretty much on a daily basis and it's on a charger a lot, but it's good to know that I'm able to get eight to 10 to maybe even 12 hours of use on a single charge if I am needing to. But that'll do it with 26.2, let's finish up the video. So that was just about to do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, 26.2 brought some nice enhancements and improvements, as well as some new features that a lot of people have been wanting for years, like being able to have the alarm triggered with your reminders application, or being able to add codes to airdrop. So let me know in the comment down below what you learned, if there's anything new that you enjoyed, maybe there's a feature that we didn't mention that was overlooked, and also mention your favorite feature of 26.2, and if you've gotten used to the new liquid glass since its release with 26.0. But that'll do it, everybody. If you want to watch more videos like this, definitely check out one of these videos right here and until next time i'm fernando peace everyone